Hey guys, welcome back to B Adventures. We got another gear review. Very long awaited camera review on my primary camera that I've been using uh, pretty much for most of the B Adventures series. If you're new to the channel, I have made a lot of travel videos around Southeast Asia, Thailand, Vietnam, Philippines, and of course I'm from Australia, so around Australia. And I've been typically using this camera, so we're going to get straight into it. I don't want to waste too much time guys, I was very, the reason why it's taken me so long to do a camera review is obviously one, I've got to build the confidence, but two, they can get very, very technical. And I'm not going to waste too much time on that. There's a lot of that technical information out there, I might put in screenshots and then you can just pause the screen and then look at that technical data. But the, the reason why, I mean, there's, there's actually really, really good photography professionals who really cover that very well in other reviews or in uh, photography blogs. So, you know, I, I don't see the need to sit here for another 30 minutes or one hour talking about that technical stuff. If you're really, really into that stuff, great. There's plenty of that information out there. So what I'm going to cover is more my user experience. And I think that's really what's going to be more useful to all of you. Meaning you, you guys can use what works for you. And these are typically the things that people don't tell you. So again, I could sit here t talking about ISO, how many megapixels, blah, 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 blah. But what does that actually mean? So what happened was I was just looking for a pocket camera, as you can see, you know, my size of my hand, just a pocket or hand size camera that I could take traveling. Something that could take high quality photos and also uh, possibly video. And that's what I ended up doing with it. I initially wanted a, a traditional handy camera, you know, like a big side folding handy camera, but that's too big, a bit more valuable, targeted by thieves as well. Uh, not very convenient. I also wanted a DSLR, you know, something with a big lens and blah, 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 blah. Again, not very convenient because it's, it's heavier, it's more expensive and also targeted by thieves. You know, and these are things that I look at. So I thought, look, I'm going to go to the pocket camera. I'll, I'll talk about uh, the deal I got later, but basically this is what I got. It is known uh, as the IXY600F. It's also known, I'm going to read this out, I'm also going to annotate it to help you guys out, make it easier. The Canon iXs 230HS in Australia, we typically call it the Canon iXs. Uh, it's a series, meaning there's different models. This is an old model, by the way, guys. This is an older model, okay? I got this in 2013 when it was new, but it is considered old now. Uh, and it's also known as the ELPH, ELF, ELPH 310HS. I believe it's also known as the PowerShot in USA, so to the American customers. I think Canon should really standardize and use one name so that we don't get confused, but hey, you know, it's how they run their business sometimes. But uh, from what I understand, they do very different models. So you might have a model in America that was slightly different, might have slightly different features. I'll just do a quick close up. As I said, guys, I don't want to waste too much time on the tech specs. 12.1 uh, 12 megapixels, it has eight times magnification and zoom, and has a three inch LCD on the back. That is the image processor. Okay, Canon's uh, Digic. Or I don't know how you say it, D-G-I-C, Digic um, Processor. So what that means is this actually has a small computer inside and that's what's processing and capturing the image. Okay. So we'll just quickly run through it. As you can see, this is, see, just autofocus. You can, you know, extend it, retract it. There's your zoom. Okay. Here's the play button, no image. So what I'll do, I'll take a photo, just for fun. What I'll do, I'll turn it off, turn it on again so it auto focuses, and that way you guys can see how fast it is. See, very fast. I'm just gonna hold down this, long press. There you go, took a photo of my desk, on the towel. There you go, we're playing it back. All right, uh, that's how user friendly it is, guys. That's, that's literally how simple it is. Here's the record button, so here's record and play. Hit record. See, I'm now making a video. See, it's auto automatically focusing and correcting. Okay. And then, that's it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, now it's recording. Now it's got the red, the red recording. And you can either press record or the top button again. See, busy. It's saving that file. And there you go. See, so we're playing it back. Uh, we're playing back the this is the video file. You can see the the video symbol up here and then uh, the photo and see it's got the, the timestamp Other data you may want and it's, it's displaying one of two one of two images and then we're back into the mode 
So again, guys, I'm not going to get too technical. As you can see, the flash is on. If you want to turn the flash off, see auto or no flash. They're very, very user friendly. Um, I've just turned it off. See, you can go self timer. Still, what I did was I hit that function menu button in the middle right here. Have you guys can get, get a look? So you can choose what type of uh, images you want. 12 megapixels at the maximum. You can also choose, see, what type of, uh, oh, it's the same thing, sorry. Compression and movie quality. See, I'm in maximum 920, 1080. All that is is like, you know, the, the recording size. Obviously, you can change it as well in your editing software. You've got your 1280, 720 and 640 should you wish to go that low. Okay, so that's it. And that's just, just to show you guys in this press function again. Get out of there. That's it. Um, what else? That's that's pretty much it, guys. It's very plug and play. So that's actually what really attracted me to this series. I I played around with Pentax and uh, what else? Some other ones and and some other friends who are really into photography had these DSLRs and fancy stuff. So I was like, I don't really need all these things. I just need to turn it on, take my pictures, blah 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 blah, and turn it off. In regards to its quality. It certainly captures excellent for what it is, for, for a pocket camera, this is not a DSLR, this is nothing fancy. Just for a pocket camera, I'll put it in my pocket. Uh, it, it does capture excellent pictures and excellent video. Um, it, as you can see, the size, uh, again, you could look up the technical specs maybe like on here. <laughs> anyway, very compact, as you can see, very compact. Just to give you an idea, um, this is a case, I'll go over that later, but no, that's a bad idea. This is about, I think, 110 centimeters. Just to give you an idea. See how compact that is? You know, and I'll just carry it around like that. See, very compact, very slick. Yeah, very smooth. Um, it does weigh 140 grams for those who care, but that, to be honest, that's like lighter than an iPhone. Just to give you guys an idea, it's lighter than like an iPhone 5 or iPhone 6. So. Yeah, I mean, that's what really, really attracted me the most. That it was so compact, it's plug and play, you just turn it on, take your photos, very user friendly, basically. And that's it, it works. Uh, as I was saying, yeah, the, the quality of the images are, are great, the zoom works great. Obviously, you do lose um, the quality as you, as you zoom in more and more and more. I'll show you guys. See, you've got, see, I'm, see it's got a zoom bar up there. So it's saying this is sort of like the most you can keep that quality. See, it's already at eight times zoom, and you can even push it further to twenty times zoom. But see how how uh, pixely it is. I know I'm looking at the desk, but see how scratchy it is. So you've lost that quality, right? And then you go back to eight again, and it gives you that warning sign. See, I've gone to nine point eight, so I'm losing that quality. But it's nice to have that capability. Should you want to be a sniper and <laughs> get that long shot, it's not meant for that, but it's just nice that it has that feature. Okay, what else? Um, the ergonomics, uh, it's again, as I said, very compact, excellent. I find that a problem. You know, this is the ideal way to hold it so that you're not covering up the microphone. So if you want to record sound or whatever, or just, you know, not smudge up the screen, not smudge up the lens. It's a common problem, guys. Always be careful, especially when you have cameras this small. People tend to grab the lens. And I hate that, you know, like, hey, can you get a photo of me? And someone ends up touching the lens. And the reason why you can actually damage it. The acids in your hand can damage the lens itself, or they'll actually push it so hard. They'll actually, I've actually seen it done. The guys have actually broken their lenses. Or they'll leave it out like that. They're reviewing photos. Blah, 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 blah. They're looking at their photos, and because they left the lens out, it extended, they put it down on a table, bang, and they've, they've broken it. Just a little tip there. Lanyard, I always love it. It's handy, obviously, so you don't drop it. I've nearly, I have actually dropped this several times, um, both just from carrying it in a pocket as well as just slipping out of my hand. As I said, when you're using it like this, that's the problem, it'll, oop, okay? If your hands are sweaty, oily, you're in, uh, you know, Vietnam, Philippines, it's all hot and sweaty, not uncommon. Okay, so basically, um, you know, very compact, very lightweight, excellent. What I find is you might even want to hold it this way, you know, it depends on how you like to hold it, it's a bit harder on camera, like like this. You know, or like like this, or up here. You know, there's, there's not much real estate, so if you've got big hands, it's, it's not that big a deal, but you can find ways to adjust. I'm sure. Um, okay, uh, accessories and versatility. I mean, there's there's so many accessories and things out there for it. So what I'll do, 
I'll start getting those together. See, obviously I showed you my, my pouch before. These ones are excellent. These sort of more like hard cases. As you can see, there's nice thick padding. Very nice, these are very good for travel. Uh, especially if you're just throwing it in a bag, you definitely wanna have that extra bit of protection. As you can see, this is just a nylon. It's like a, a novelty nylon pouch, but I've actually put uh, padding. And see, I'll put padding again at the bottom. Always do that, guys. Like, see, it's just some cheap padding I got from packaging. And I line the bottom. The reason why I was just finding when I dropped it, just so I've got it like this. When I dropped it, I'll typically drop it downwards, and I've actually dropped it a few times. Uh, there's another one. This is actually a phone case. You know, you can put your spare batteries. I've actually got spare batteries in here. What have we got? Yep. See? These are very easy to find too, about $10. You can find them for around $10 to $20. Uh, you can find them around the world. That, that was cool. I found that all over Asia. These are the NB4L. These are a common Canon battery. Let's put the camera focus. Okay. So, yeah. And then obviously you can put your camera or different accessories inside there, whatever. If you want a classier one, here's a leather one. So I might wear that to a wedding or something. Seriously, so, you know, that looks a bit funny. I've worn that with a suit and it looked a bit funny. People thought, what, what's in there, like an ammunition or a gun? You know, got a nice classy leather one. Um, I just have some uh, a rag in there to hold its shape. The reason, just me, I just like the leather to hold its shape. But that's actually got a magnet, see? So that's cool. And yeah, what else? Uh, I'll, I'll get to that later. Oh, sorry guys, I forgot to run you through the... I hate unboxing videos because I don't really... It's just watching someone open a box. This is what it came with. As I said, for my region, it was the IXY. I didn't, I've never needed to use the, the installation CD. It was plug and play. I'll show you guys what I mean. It came with USB and this wall charger and also the adapter. Okay, so that way I can use it in different countries. So that was really cool. This is the Australian type socket. Okay, and then this double, this straight dual uh, parallel pin. This is common in Philippines, and I believe pretty much Southeast Asia. I think, uh, I think it was the same in Thailand and uh, Vietnam as well. But I remember th this is extremely handy. So I brought both just in case. But typically, hey, if that fits, plug it straight into the wall. If it doesn't, I can use the adapter. For example, here in Australia, not a problem. That, but that's very handy traveling. There is another version with wires coming out of it, uh, a more traditional desk desktop one. I've traveled with that too, that's fine, but I, was, I like how slick this is. It's a contained unit, you know, the, the wall connection is here for your power, and you plug your battery in and charge there. You know what, I'll give you guys a quick demo. Why not, while I have all my parts all together. See, the connection type, you can just plug it in, and then that will turn uh, red if it's uh, charging, and then green when it's ready. The reason why I put numbers, so I know that my different batteries, Sometimes I get a dud, like one battery might just be old and wearing out or not charging well, so I know which one it is, battery number one, number four, whatever. And also, so I can keep track of how many batteries I have. Uh, just a little tip for you guys. Okay, so that was pretty much it. Again, I loved how it's plug and play. Some other cameras I found were very annoying. You had to install their software, you had to, you know, uh, do certain things, set it up, blah, blah, blah. This was just awesome. Plug in your USB, plugs, plug you can straight into the computer and it's ready to rock and it typically has um, pretty standard files again forgive me so there's there's your uh, USB connection you just plug it see the USB mini mini USB connection or whatever you call it micro and then you plug that into your computer uh, from what I understand I, I haven't heard anything bad from Apple users I believe that's HDMI as well um, I typically use a PC Windows PC I've never had any problems with it um, just plug and play. I no, no need to ever put in firmware or anything like that. I love it. See this trapdoor? This was actually a criticism of this particular camera. That it had this flimsy plastic trapdoor. This is alloy. This is aluminum. Very nicely made. Slick. You know, good quality. But that, I don't know if you can hear it. Yeah, it's not, it's not there anymore. It used to rattle. It used to rattle. Um, the guys in Vietnam fixed it when I broke it in Vietnam. There's a trapdoor, as you can see. Just this flimsy plastic. The reason why I want to demonstrate that I haven't had a problem with this exact model, but I have another one, and that trapdoor is is loose. There's play, so even when you lock it shut like that, it plays, it wobbles, 
and it says low battery. Some of you may have that problem with these cannons. All you need to do is put a strip of plastic, you know, just scrap plastic or duct tape. Put a, just a thin layer of duct tape and you can just layer it and layer it until you get enough, enough uh, layering to get a, a tight lock, okay? So if, you, if you've got that low battery problem where it just says low battery randomly, it's probably because your door isn't shut properly and you can also push on it, push on it to see if, if it is actually that loose door. So that's just a quick little tip. Oh, I nearly turned it on. Yep, just make sure it's working. I mean, well, I've had this since 2013, guys. It's now 2016, three years. Still kicking. Okay, sorry, I'll get back to that trap door and that area. Okay, so this is your, excuse me, that's it. Very easy to swap batteries, that is excellent. So if you get a flat, flat battery, you can just put in your spare or for whatever reason you need to service it. It takes standard SD cards. As you can see, this is actually a micro. That's, it's actually got a micro SD. I'll just put it in the adapter. As you can see, 32 gig, plenty of memory there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I started off with eight gig then went up to, you know, 16 gig. Each one was fine, to be honest. Why I actually like these older ones, this is again 12 megapixels, you have more to play with. If you go up to 20 megapixel, 30 megapixel, don't get me wrong, that's cool, that's all normal now. But you get these massive video and, and um, picture files, photo files. So you will fill up those very, very quickly. So to be honest, 32 gig is pretty excessive. You don't really need it. That means I can take like 1,500 photos with this camera, something excessive like that, okay? So anyway... Let's try and close it again properly this time. Um, that is a standard thread. That is very, very important, meaning it takes standard quarter, I believe it's quarter inch or it's the standard tripod thread. Canon are very, very smart. Thumbs up, Canon. They, they figure that out. They're like, guys, we're not going to use our own proprietary special thread. You can use all your standard accessories. Why does that matter? Well, if I buy one of these cheap little tripods, I'll show you guys. See? Just screws in. That's it. That easy. And of course, standard professional tripods. You know, all the adapters and shoes that you can click on and off. See, that's it. I do that as well when I'm traveling. I use it like a selfie stick. Sorry, guys, I've got this on a tripod. See? Um, what I might do, I might adjust my, my tripod just so I can do some more demos for you guys, okay? So I'll be right back. Okay, that's much better. So that way, you see what I mean, guys? So I can sit here doing a selfie. You know, it might be with friends, whatever, but it's a bit easier to hold. I know it looks a bit awkward because I'm behind the, uh, the camera right now. Blah, 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 take my selfie, or I could spin it around, use it like a, a grip. And of course, turn it off. That easy. That easy to set up. Okay. This is a very cheap one. I got it for like three bucks. I will be doing tripod reviews as well, um, to, to more detail, but just to give you an idea. So all your standard accessories should fit. Oh. This is a very, try to stay away from these cheap ones, guys. I've got to be honest. Even if you see them for three, four, five dollars, stay away from them there. They're really flimsy and quite often they can even break or fall down. And the problem is with these ball joints, see how it's got a ball joint? No matter how hard you wrench down on there, that ball can still, see? It can still move and that's locked. That's as tight as it, as it, as it can go. But uh, anyway, look, don't want to get too distracted. Uh, as I was showing you the different cases, you also got pistol grips. These are okay. I'm going to do a simple review, you know, so you could mount it like that or like that. Okay, so you know, all the different accessories, so that's what I mean, that's what's so great about having a standard thread, okay, or your standard quarter inch uh, or, or quarter threads will work. Forgive me, I can annotate the exact name of it below. Okay, so that brings us to the value. Uh, I got this for $160 Australian, this was in 2013 and it was new, it was considered new at that time. Mind you, many products are released late in Australia, it's kind of sad. So Canon, Sony, you know, blah, 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 GoPro, they all release their products uh, uh, quite late usually. So we get them like a year after you might get it in the US or Europe or even, you know, China and Japan or they, they will get it way before us. So the point is uh, $160 Australian, uh, excellent, excellent, excellent value. I did see it in stores, in retailers for around $300 when it was new. So I was being, ah, $300, that's okay. That's still, a, you know, a fair price. And then I saw it on sale 250, and then I saw it on sale again 200. And as I said, I saw it. It was actually an online sale. I saw it online. I, I snatched it up. I could not resist 160 dollars. I was like, when I bought this, if this thing broke in Vietnam, pff, I don't care. If this broke in Philippines, pff, I don't care. 160 bucks, it's okay, right? 
Um, that's actually what this warranty sticker is. This is a Vietnamese warranty sticker. I did actually end up breaking it. I am not careless, guys. I do take care of my electronics. I, I treat them very respectfully. As I said, I always put them in cases and carry them in pouches and whatever. And I treat, as I said, like even I don't touch the lens and try to break it. What happened is um, because I'm such an active person, I think you can see a scratch. So you've got a big scratch there. <laughs> that was day one. That, that really upset me. That was like the first day I got it. I got a scratch on it. But anyway, because I do a lot of um, activities, I actually use this like an action camera. So that's actually the, the ironic thing. I actually use this like an action camera. Action camera? What do you mean? And I will do a super review. This is a Sony uh, AS200V action camera. This is a waterproof camera, okay? Yeah, splash proof, but it's in a waterproof case. So this is for that roll it down, oh, hit it. <laughs> roll it down your driveway, throw it off the bridge, throw it in the, you know, this is for that crazy stuff, right? And the reason why I didn't go this, I, I always prefer the traditional image. So it's not just me being old school. At the time, these were not that common and they were very, very expensive. So again, for $160, these retail for around $400 uh, at this point in time, by the way, guys. And certainly back then, they were around $500 Australian. So you imagine I could buy three or four. I could buy two or three of these for the same price as this. So that's why I wanted to bring it up. I was like, man, I might as well buy two of these, which is actually what I did. I have a backup. Even if I break it, I have a spare backup while I'm traveling. And I don't have to worry about these things. These things, the accessories will kill you. But I'll, I'll do a dedicated review later. I, ha I have to put this thing through the ringer, guys. So um, the reason why I haven't done a review yet is I'm still testing it out. Okay, testing out its capability. I haven't, I haven't traveled overseas with it yet, but I have traveled overseas with this. So Vietnam, three trips to the Philippines. Yeah, three. I brought it on all the trips. My goodness, you know, so this is really, this is really performed. Um, if, you, if you watch my videos, guys, sorry about the shaky camera, because as you can see, I'm probably holding it like this, and I'm running around. But I've done crazy things with this. I've gone caving. <laughs> I've walked through rivers and lakes. I've been through the jungles in Vietnam and Philippines. I have, what else? I've been to shooting ranges. I've been... <laughs> I've done like crazy things with this camera. So again, I had this level of detachment. It's not meant for that. It's not meant to be an action camera. But I had this level of detachment of, hey, I'm not too worried. And I was treating it like one of these. And that is the only uh, drawback of this camera that it's not waterproof. I'm not game to get it uh, wet. I have splashed it near waterfalls and rivers and whatever. I have gotten it splashed and I quickly dried it off. I quickly put it away, you know, uh, turned it off dried it out thoroughly because I was, you know, I was worried I might kill my camera. But that is the only drawback. So I have used this like an action camera. What happened was, I'm trying to find it. See, you can see little scratches. Just let the camera focus. You can see little scratches and dents. Oh, I've, um, I've actually dropped this rock climbing and I thought I killed it. You can see, see, you can see the alloy coming through. The paint, it's just the paint or the anodizing coming off. Where else? There's a really big dent. I really, um, I was so worried I broke it. Uh, forgive me guys. Oh yeah, here. See that? That's not a normal... See how I've put a massive dent? I actually dropped it rock climbing in Australia. And uh, I handed it to a friend like, hey, get a photo of me. And he went, oh! And he dropped it right on that corner on this rock. And I thought, oh, you had this crack. And I thought, oh man, you've killed my camera. And it, hey, it kept working. It did eventually, as I said, it did eventually die in Vietnam. Luckily, I found a Canon, genuine Canon repairer in Vietnam and they fixed it for $50. And they even gave me a warranty on the repair. What happened was the autofocus, the part that allows this to focus, um, I believe it's like a ring behind here, uh, that had actually broken. So that's a major component, but it cost $50 to repair, including labor. That was wonderful. Um, I don't know about America, but in Australia, it's hard to find people who can do that. And often Canon will just say, hey, just buy another one. They're so, so affordable. So it was nice that they actually repaired it. And also so I could keep using it during my travels in Vietnam. Okay, so I've, I've kind of covered the durability. I mean, I have done some silly things with these guys. I mean, I've gotten salt water on it. I've <laughs> and again, not intentionally. I'm not intentionally trying to break it. But even things, like I said, I wasn't using the lanyard. I was holding it weakly like that. And I went, oh, and I dropped it right on the ground. I was like, oh, man, is that it? And it just kept working. Um, and also, as I said, I've dropped it while in the cases. That's exactly why you use cases. So it gets a bit more padding and protection. But um, yeah, guys, look, I've got to say, the value, the durability, the track record, three years, and it still works. You know, I haven't killed it yet. <laughs> three years, I did, I, like I said, I did break it severely once, and then I had to take it to a repairer, but uh, look, outstanding. I think, I think that's really outstanding value. 
$160. Now, remember, guys, this is an old model. I did buy this in 2013. There's newer models available. As I said, Canon and their funny designations, it might be called, you know, IXS, IXY, ELPH, or ELF, or PowerShot, depending on your region. But that is an advantage, guys. One, if you find an older one of these, you're probably going to find it very affordably, like me, maybe for around, you know, $100, maybe, maybe less, maybe a little more. If you want to get a new one, the new ones are still very, very affordable. Again, under $200 or around $200. I've seen these in Australian retailers, like the latest uh, new series, maybe it's the 2 something. So this would have been called the IXS 230. Maybe it's the 250, the 260, the 270, you know what I mean? The, just the model names, the 200 series. You might find them, uh, yeah, uh, very affordable. Like I said, around $150, $200 too. So just to give you that, that idea of the Canon, the Canon pocket camera concept, uh, for what they are, very affordable, excellent, and especially for beginners uh, or people who just want something simple, user-friendly, point and shoot, I always recommend them to friends and, and family. Uh, all right, guys, thanks for putting up with me. Uh, you know, it has been a long review, but uh, just, just sort of sharing the feedback and my experiences. Uh, I, I will be traveling with this again to Philippines. I will be going to Philippines again soon. And yeah, great camera, great camera for what it is. So for me, the next step, as I said, would be to actually go up to a dedicated handy camera or DSLR, you know, with the, the big lens and everything like that. But for now, it's it's certainly a very happy medium, meaning for the size and weight capability and, and what it costs, hey, I could buy two or three of these instead of getting a GoPro or a action camera or whatever. But you will see a dedicated review on an action camera later. Alright guys, uh, thanks for watching. Make sure you check out the YouTube main page and the Facebook page. And as always, uh, thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and travel safe guys. Okay, travel safe.